From the beautiful Missouri Ozarks, this is the Gilbert House Fellowship Bible Study for Sunday, July 21st, 2024. I'm Derek Gilbert. I am Sharon Gilbert, and we are so glad that you've chosen to join us this morning. How many of these have we done? This is number 417. So this is coming to you from the 417, and it is number 417. I 417 like 417. Is our area, yeah, it's our area code. You know, I've we've had area code 417, 317, 217. We keep moving back and forth along the 39th parallel. I know we do. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for joining us today here in the barn, which you have made possible through your generous gifts. We truly appreciate having this workspace. It... Working from, from the spare rooms as we did for many, many years, mm-hmm. uh, and we're coming up on our 10th anniversary of this study, we're coming up on our 20-year anniversary of PID Radio, the podcast that started the whole thing. But 10th um, or 11th? Oh, of this study. Of this study, yeah. We, we started in 2014. I thought we started in 13, but yeah, at least 2014, yeah. I'll have to go back. Actually, we might be at uh, 10 years. Any, anyway, the, the, bottom, Long time. Yeah, the, the bottom line is we've been at this for a while, and um, it's doable. In, in a makeshift space, because we, we did it for many years that way, but uh, have it, there's something psychological about coming to the office and, mm-hmm. um, and being able to kind of separate, okay, now we're, we're out of the house and that we can relax when we're in the house. Yeah, it's really hu- huge. It's huge for me because in the house, you know, I'm thinking, well, I've got to go fold that laundry. I've got to go do those dishes. I've got to do, <laughs> because that's how my, my brain works is, Plus, I've got to go sit down and write this book. And, and, mm-hmm. But coming out here, it's like I leave all that behind. Yeah. Somehow that belongs to the house. Yes. And, and that's, uh, again, that's one of the benefits of having this dedicated space. Um, besides just having the room to do things uh, a little more uh, efficiently mm-hmm. than, than before. Yeah, speaking of efficiency, we've got to figure out if we're going to actually have a, a Bible's Greatest Mysteries set. Um, some of you may not have heard We've been given the rights back to the show. We mm-hmm. shared them with Skywatch TV, and when when uh, it was decided that we were going to branch off into a sister ministry, we left the full rights with Skywatch. Yeah. So they could do with the with the show whatever they pleased, and and Joe has just said, you know, you guys should just that was really your show. You should do it. So we're going to continue it. Yeah. Which means brand new ones. It's just where are we going to do it? Where are we going to do it? I think there's a space in here and you you can't see because this is audio only, but I'm indicating to Derek (laughs) where I'm thinking of. It's just probably going to require a little bit of set dressing and some lights. Yeah. Well, we can, we can make that happen. We can. So uh, again, thank you for joining us. If you uh, take a moment uh, just to remind you that uh, our app is available for free and uh, really has some additional benefits besides ba- bypassing the gatekeepers of tech, big tech. It uh, a- adds you to the growing community in the messaging section of the app. We've got several hundred people who are in there and um, many use it on a regular basis to uh, share praise reports, prayer requests, Ask questions of us, and we will have a question again before the end of this study to uh, answer. And you'll find a link to download the app for your device, iOS, Android, Amazon, Kindle Fire, at gilberthouse.org slash app. And, and I did look it up. Our oh. very first study was September 11th of oh. 2014. Oh, 9-11 of 2014. Yeah. Mm. Yep. I uh, want to remind everybody also that uh, my podcast, The Armored Sheep, <laughs> We'll probably begin sometime in late uh, August or early September, perhaps on 9-11. Hmm. We'll see. Um, waiting for it. That actually would be a really good day to start. That. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Need to get you a hmm. USB mic out there. Get you okay. a USB microphone. Just, All just right. To well, I don't audio. think about those things. Yeah, I do. I so know. I will work I think on about that. the dishes. You think about the USB microphones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, many other things, labor. yeah, many other things coming up, a couple new conferences to uh, remind you about. And of course, next weekend, we will not have a study because we'll be in Dayton, Ohio. In fact, when you, one week from today, you will be in the pulpit <clears throat> at Neil Peterson's church, the very yeah. location for the conference. So if you are going to the conference, you can stay over mm-hmm. if you can, if you're able stay over Saturday night. And come to church on Sunday morning. Yeah, that'll be uh, that'll be interesting. I'll be basically be talking about our our recent uh, tour trip to Israel. I he- hesitate to call it a tour uh, because it was less that and more about just. It was a solidarity mission. Yeah, it was 
incredible. We really can't. We can't, There are no words, seriously, for what it meant to us. Mm-hmm. And we'll talk about our return because we will be leading another, uh, well. <laughs> God willing, we'll God, go once again. Yeah, come November. We've got dates for another um, Solidarity Mission to Israel in November. We'll talk about that before the end of this study as well. But let's uh, pray, and then we'll dive into the Proverbs once again. Father, thank you for bringing us together over your word, and, and especially over this book that is a collection of so many, what on the surface appear to just be pithy sayings, but uh, when we dig in as with all of your word, we find layers upon layers of meaning. So, Father, as we study this morning, we ask you to open our minds and our hearts to receive that which you would have us learn. Lord, um, thank you for preserving these words of Solomon for 3,000 years that we might benefit from them. Lord, we pray for your blessing as we study. We ask for wisdom, and uh, we ask for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> yeah, the pollen this weekend, if you hear me clearing my voice, it's, it's you know, I'm fine. It's, it's just allergies that I've dealt with since I was a child, and uh, so that leads to a little gunk in the pipes. Oh, I'm going through the same thing, and I didn't have aller- uh, any of that childhood stuff. Oh. It's just... Allergies. Yeah, boy, howdy, did I have it. So mm. mostly grown out of it, but even still, um, lot, lots of uh, antihistamines in my daily regimen. Proverbs 18, verse 1. Whoever isolates himself seeks his own desire. He breaks out against all sound judgment. Here's the Septuagint, and I read the Brenton, which is free to read at BibleHub.com. Uh, there's a pull-down menu on the right that tells you which of the many, 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 many translations, you have the options of choosing, and this is that one. It's the Brinton. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was translated from the Greek in late tw- 19th, early 20th century. Yeah, Lancelot Brinton. Yep. Mm-hmm. A man who wishes to separate from friends seeks excuses, mm. but at all times he will be liable to reproach. Hmm. Yeah. Separating from friends and he seeks excuses, but he's still going to be liable for to reproach from them. Yeah, this is more than somebody who just likes to be alone. Mm-hmm. Because, again, on the surface, you and I would look at this and say, well, what's wrong with wanting some alone time? Yeah, me. Because we, oh, tend, we tend to ap- appreciate that. But uh, being introverts, yeah. But the uh, the notes at the Net Bible, the New English Translation, which you can find for free online at netbible.org, says that the the Hebrew the he, the structure of the Hebrew indicates it's um, there. There's some more nuance to it. One who has separated himself, not merely somebody who's antisocial and doesn't like being around other people. He's somebody who refuses to listen to anybody else. Mm-hmm. He but he will be liable himself. to reproach. Yeah. He refuses. And this is a theme that we've been seeing through the books of, of Proverbs that we've read so far. People who reject sound advice, people who reject good counsel, who reject correction, mm-hmm. are setting themselves up for big trouble. Right. I keep picturing social media. <laughs> yeah, Comment yeah. section. Mm-hmm. Reproach, reproach. Mm-hmm. Verse 2, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. Yeah, social media. Yeah, this says he is led rather by folly. Mm -hmm. When wickedness comes, contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes disgrace. It's a little bit different in the Septuagint when an ungodly man comes into a depth of evils. He despises them, Hmm. but dishonor and reproach come upon him. If you Put this one with the very first one. You've gone into, you may leave your friends Mm -hmm. for, I don't know, to join some group of other friends that are doing wicked things. And no, I I, I really, trust me, this is a good group. All sorts of excuses. But it's the depth of evils. And he'll hate himself for being there. Hmm. He despises them. Mm-hmm. When an ungodly man comes into a depth of evils, he evils he despises them, but dishonor and reproach come upon him. 
mm-hmm. even mm-hmm. though he's got self-loathing mm-hmm. and hates what he's in. Ah, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. But at all times, he will be liable to reproach. That's the second half of verse one. Huh. Yeah, it uh, again, layers of meaning here. Mm-hmm. Because it can also refer to the reaction of people when they see that somebody's doing wicked things. Yeah, um, the the uh, sort of chapter heading for the Septuagint mm-hmm. is the selfishness of the unfriendly. Ah, okay. Huh. Verse 4 now. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The fountain of wisdom is a bubbling brook. Close here, it just says a word in the heart of a man is a deep water, and a river and fountain of life spring forth. This is contrary to this guy who is in the depth of evils and despises the evil and himself, probably. Um, That's sort of subtext for me. Mm. But a word in the heart of of a man is a deep water. Is this what you seem to... In the ESV, it seems to be, he's speaking the word. This might be, he hears the word. A word in the heart of a man is a deep water, and a river and fountain of life spring forth. More than likely, it's something he spoke, but Mm -hmm. regardless, uh, words of a true friend, the wounds of a friend, Mm -hmm. Our healing. Mm -hmm. Verse 5, it is not good to be partial to the wicked or to deprive the righteous of justice. It is not good to accept the person of the ungodly, nor is it holy to pervert justice in judgment. Mm -hmm. Psalm 82 Mm -hmm. extends that even into the spirit realm Mm -hmm. where uh, where God condemns these lesser Elohim, the sons of God, for showing partiality to the wicked. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you were supposed to show, you know, kindness and love uh, to, to these children of mine. Mm-hmm. That was your job. Yeah. And that's the reason they were condemned, where God says, uh, though you are men, though you are God, sons of the Most High, all of you, nevertheless, like men, you shall die. But yeah, how long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Mm-hmm. That's why they were condemned. Hmm. Verse six: A fool's lips, <laughs> a fool's lips walk into a fight, and his mouth invites a beating. <laughs> That's a good one to remember. Well, this one says the lips of a fool bring him into troubles, and his bold mouth calls for death. Mm. Not just beating, mm-hmm. death. Yeah, make note of that one. Proverbs yeah. eighteen, verse six, uh, verse seven. Now, a fool's mouth is his ruin, and his lips are a snare to his soul. That's sort of a, uh, a couplet, a parallel to verse 6. Mm-hmm. The words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels. They go down into the inner parts of the body. This is one of those, because I, I read through both ESV and, and Septuagint this morning, and this is one that differs quite a bit. Verse 8. Fear casts down the slothful, mm. and the souls of the effeminate shall hunger. Yes, it says effeminate. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. Fear casts down the slothful, and the souls of the effeminate shall hunger. Hmm. That, that is quite a difference from the Masoretic text on which the English mm-hmm. Bible is based. Um, I'm picturing those uh, um, art, artists who used to linger around the... Uh, watering holes, the coffee bars, etc., in East London, and even in parts of West London, and did nothing Mm -hmm. but complained a lot. Right. And they would write poetry to complain a lot. (laughs) I I heard a similar bit of wisdom from a a real estate broker when I was getting started in real estate back around 1990. Did that full-time for a couple of years. Um, He said, There are some in the office who hang around in the coffee room smoking cigarettes and complaining, never telling you why you can't do what you're trying to do. 
never confuse 15 years of experience for one year of experience repeated 15 times. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is it. Yeah. Um, the, Fear and, and, casts and, down the slothful. And uh, verse 8 here, the words of the whisperer are like delicious morsels. This is not encouraging gossip. What it says is those who engage in it are always looking for more. No, but I guess my question is, why is there such a difference between the two versions? That's a good question. Between the two uh, original manuscripts. Yeah, I don't, I don't know don't know no, this uh is repeated by the way verbatim in proverbs 26 verse 22 mm-hmm. so we'll when we get to proverbs we'll 26 we'll we'll see if that same change was made oh good question in Between, fact i can look it up right now Well, let's let's go there right now proverbs 26 22 which in the esv is exactly what i just read in proverbs 18 the words of a whisperer are like delicious morsels they go down into the inner parts of the body this says, the words of cunning knaves are soft, but they smite even the inmost parts of the bowels. Hmm. The uh, Lexham English Septuagint, which is a very recent English translation from the Greek, words of knaves, hmm. knaves are soft, and these beat in the chambers of the guts. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Okay, back to Proverbs 18, verse 9. Whoever is slack in his work is a brother to him who destroys. A man who helps not himself by his labor is brother of him that ruins himself. Mm. Him who destroys in the Hebrew is Baal Mashkith. Well, I don't have that manuscript in here. Lord Lord of destruction. Oh, yes. Mashkith, Har Ha Mashkith, Mount of the Destroyer. Yeah. Baal Mashkith, Lord of Destruction. Or Lord Destruction. Yeah. In capital D. Uh Uh-huh. Lord Destroyer. Um, In the Hebrew, according to the translator's notes in the Net Bible, they render the literal translation possessor or owner of destruction. Hmm. Baal can mean not just Lord, but also mean owner, possessor, master of the house. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 10. The name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Yep, that this says, and is exalted. Mm-hmm. And, and again, the, the name is Hashem. Hashem Yahweh. And underline this, or highlight this verse, because this is in great contrast to the foolish men yeah. up until now. Mm-hmm. And, and we see this uh, sort of reversed in, in verse 11 here. And by the way, as we talked before, the name of Yahweh is not his reputation. The name is another manifestation, another type of manifestation. Right, Hashem. Um, when uh, he told Moses to follow the angel that was in the, the cloud, the, the pillar of fire, uh, to follow him because, for my name is in him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, it's a concept that is very foreign to us in the West, but it was common and understood not just by Hebrews, but by the pagans in the ancient world. You know, the because Hashem, the pre-incarnate Christ, was in the pillar of cloud, mm-hmm. they were following the shepherd. Correct. In fact, yeah. Psalm 23 says, Yahweh is my shepherd. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the concept of the Trinity is in the Bible, if you know what you're yeah. looking for. Um, so you've got that. The, the name of Yahweh is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. Verse 11 now, a rich man's wealth is his strong city. And like a high wall in his imagination. Hmm. This says, and its glory mm-hmm. casts a broad shadow. Yeah, yeah. I, I, th- I like the, uh, the way the Masoretes tweaked that just a little bit. Rather than trusting in Yahweh for strength, a rich man's going to trust in his wealth. Uh, but it's a high wall in his imagination. Mm-hmm. Before destruction, a man's heart is haughty but humility comes before honor. If one gives an answer before he hears, it is his folly and shame. Okay, just bear this in mind if you're ever on a game show. (laughs) Yes. And first word of the question, you're hitting your buzzer. Mm Mm-hmm. No. Yeah. Wait until... Will not serve you well on Jeopardy. Um, But also, coming back to social media. 
Mm-hmm. I read the headline of the story you linked to, and I object. Did you read the story? Because what you're objecting to is exactly the opposite of what the story said. Uh huh. <laughs> oh, I know. We get that all the time, and I know many of you also of see that. Yeah, we all do yeah. it because we only have so many hours in the day, and mm-hmm. sadly, there is a lot of content that content out there that we all want to consume. Mm-hmm. We want to watch these hour and a half long videos, and we want to watch, you know, uh, um, many more commentaries and and films and docu documentaries and and read every book that's out there don't have time mm-hmm. i wish we did yeah derek and i try to do what we can but i mean just don't have enough time yeah but and again the temptation is to in order to save time to not really pay attention mm-hmm. to the point before responding to it those that provide it if if I really want to know what's going on and I don't have the time to watch the video, I'll read the transcript. Mm, hmm That's faster. M- much. Yeah. yeah. The, the other advantage to that, by the way, not to rabbit trail too far, is that... Um, We've got a stuffed bunny in here. We can do that. <laughs> Oftentimes, it is easy to be swayed by the body language or facial expressions of the person, deli- which is why in those pharmaceutical ads, you see all these... Happy people running in slow motion with dogs and balloons. And, and the and, voice that's warning you of the possible death yeah. is so nice. And don't forget, side effects include yeah. and if blindness. You just read that, yeah. Ex- <laughs> death. Explosive uh, s- stuff. And if you were to read that, it would be like, why would I want to put this into my body? But because you're seeing it in an ad exactly. filled with happy people doing fun things. In that case, what right. you see is more important than what you're hearing. And again, what you're hearing is very gently delivered. Right. I, I hosted a debate once, and th- this is why I won't do it again. I, I don't think they really are edifying. People just want to hear their point of view, the champion of their point of view, smite mm-hmm. the other. Mm-hmm. And, and this debate was between two people. I'm not going to name names. It's still at vftv.net if anybody wants to go searching for it. But anyway, one viewpoint was that uh, Christianity was created by Constantine at the Council of Nicaea, which is historically, it's just, it was not, it it was not, it was just, that's historically false. Mm. But the person who was defending the faith and defending Christianity was getting frustrated with the other party and so he came across as angrier oh and so there were people who thought that the person who was arguing for what it really is heresy mm. won the debate because he came across as friendlier so that that's a, that's an extreme example but uh, again it's how a message a false message can be sold through Yes. Yeah, that, so that's, that's why we'd rather read the information. Very much so. And that is an interesting thing because I think in this world that the fallen realm seem more persuasive mm-hmm. than those of us who are trying to fight against them. Right. Because sometimes we get really angry mm-hmm. because we're, we're, we can have a righteous anger, but if you're angry because that moment you can't think of of a really good supportive scripture mm-hmm. to uh to counter with and you just get mad that's yeah. not getting you anywhere right especially when you're witnessing to somebody right right a, a gentle answer turneth away wrath mm-hmm. yeah so um yeah it, it is uh consistent with what we've been reading through these first 18 chapters, 18 chapters of the book of uh, Proverbs, that um, being slow to respond, listening fully, humility is uh, wisdom and will probably serve us all well in, as we represent our king as ambassadors. You meant to yeah. that. Now, which verse did you just read? Uh, verse 13, if one gives an answer before he hears, it, it is his folly and shame. I think 14 follows up on what you yeah. were talking about. A man's spirit will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit who can bear. This says a wise servant calms a man's anger. Mm. This isn't talking necessarily about a footman in a guy's nice big house. Mm-hmm. We are all servants. We're supposed to be 
mm-hmm. serving mankind. So if we're wise, we will try to calm the anger of those who are railing against Christ. Yeah. Who will endure a discouraged man in yeah. the Lexham Septuagint? This is faint-hearted. Yeah. Um, if, if you are encouraged by the Holy Spirit, you can endure a lot. And, and we've seen this in, in friends even recently who were dealing and dealt, oh, dealt with. And still. Yeah. Get still friends here. Right. Well. And, and bear up with, with good spirit, with, with cheer. Mm-hmm. And they, they endure and are really a, uh, an example of the strength that you can draw from the Holy Spirit. But you can be physically well, and if your spirit has been crushed, you, you lose the will to live, and it can, that can make you physically ill. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is, this is, there's a lot of truth in this. A man's spirit, or a person's spirit even, will endure sickness, but a crushed spirit, who can bear? Verse 15, and an intelligent heart acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. Could you say that one more time? An intelligent heart acquires knowledge. Okay, I couldn't tell if you said acquires or requires. Ah. Big difference. Mm-hmm. Verse 16, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before the great. This is a man's gift enlarges him. Embiggens him. Embiggens him, him yeah. <laughs> um, and, and this, uh, the Hebrew word here is different from the word for bribe. Mm-hmm. The Hebrew word matan means a, a gift offered sincerely and yet not something that's intended to uh, pervert justice. The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. Hold on. That's verse 17. I, no, I know. Just read it again. Um, what? Well, let me read this one. A righteous man accuses himself at the beginning of, of his speech, but when he has entered upon the attack, the adversary is reproved. Mm. His own accuser, but of course a righteous person won't really be accusing him much. Accusing himself, mm-hmm. but he is reproved when the opponent takes his turn. Yeah, that is a little a little different. Yeah. The one who states his case first seems right until the other comes and examines him. Mm-hmm. And the, then the adversary is reproved. Mm-hmm. The lot puts an end to quarrels and decides between powerful contenders. Oh, this is quite different. A silent man quells strifes. Not the lot. Hmm. A silent man quells strifes and determines between great powers. Mm -hmm. That's different from the lot Mm. or a lot. Yeah. The Net Bible renders it a toss of the coin. Mm? A toss of a coin, rather. What does um, the Lexham Subtuagent say? Uh, and, and toss the, a coin in a silent man, unless a silent man is an idiom for yeah. tossing a coin. Well, they, they, they utilize that phrase because the idiom of casting lots is not something that modern readers are familiar with. It, it would be like drawing straws. We, we understand what drawing straws means, flipping a coin, but casting lots, not so much. Now, oh, I know what casting lots means. I, I understand I that. It's a silent man part. Yeah, that I, may that, be an idiom that... Also means yeah. casting lots. Lexham Septuagint renders it the same way. A silent person stops arguments, and he delineates among the powerful. That that may be an idiom meaning, okay, let's go to the silent man to settle this. Flip a coin, heads that, or tails. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right, right. We'll need to find out. We yeah. need to mo- know who's the silent man. <laughs> the third man. The fourth man in the fire. Mm-hmm. A brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city. And quarreling is like the bars of a castle. This is really close. A brother helped by a brother is as strong as a high city and is as strong as a well-founded palace. Hmm. Pretty close. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, a brother offended is more unyielding than a strong city. Boy, howdy. Mm-hmm. This says a brother helped yeah. by, a, by a brother. They They kind of tweaked that verse again between the Septuagint and the Masoretic Masoret- mm, text. Yeah. But uh, there is a lot of truth to that. Have you seen families who argue over something? I've never understood that. I have never understood that. It, it is wearying to carry yeah. that kind of anger. Yeah, 
Yeah, it but, really is. But uh, it it is not unknown seeing elderly siblings still arguing over things that happened when <laughs> when they were children. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Uh, verse 20, from the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. A man fills his belly with the fruits of his mouth, and he shall be satisfied with the fruits of his lips. Nothing hmm. makes me happier than sitting here talking. <laughs> Must be a politician. Yeah, yeah. I just love to hear me. I can't get enough of me. <laughs> Uh, Verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. And those that rule it shall eat the fruits thereof. That's Mm -hmm. that's how it is. Yeah. Not clear if that means good or bad. It probably is is accurate both ways. Well, yeah, probably is. But ruling it is a whole lot different than loving it. Mm. Mm. Verse 22. It's that silent man thing. (laughs) He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from Yahweh. Amen. Uh, there's mm. a part A to this. Mm. Oh, he there is. that puts away a good wife puts away a good thing. Mm. And he that keeps an adulteress is foolish and ungodly. Mm. Why did the Masoretes s- strike that one out of their text? Good question. Well, the Septuagint omits yeah. 23 and 24. Hmm, interesting. Verse 23, the poor use entreaties, but the rich answer roughly. Verse 24. They they give orders and the poor have to beg. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Verse 24, a man of many companions may come to ruin, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. Yep. Yeah, that is a good good verse to remember. Mm Mm-hmm. So we now move to Proverbs 19. 19. Better is a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and is a fool. Hmm. Septuagint is similar but slightly different. Wealth adds many friends, but the poor one is abandoned even by the friend that he has. Oh, that's sadly far far too true. But again, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Mm -hmm. Desire without knowledge is not good. And whoever makes haste with his feet misses his way. Hmm. A false witness will not go unpunished. And the one who accuses wrongfully will not escape. That uh, is not even close. I know. Desire without knowledge is not good, and whoever, it's like they substituted another one. Mm-hmm. We don't like that. We, we're going to put another one here. I wonder why that is. Yeah. The, oh, the, to be in the minds the, of the Masoretes. Yeah. And, and by the way, this is, you're seeing why we look at the Septuagint to try to get an understanding of what the Jewish religious scholars of the time of the Second Temple um, which included the time of Jesus and the apostles, thought about their Old Testament scriptures. And it also gives a clue as to how things were tweaked in the centuries between the Septuagint around 200 BC and the Masoretic text, which was complete around 900 AD. Mm-hmm. And um, some of the tweaks were made to de-emphasize the existence of other spirit beings in the spirit realm because Christians were using that to justify the, yeah, the angel of Yahweh, the name of Yahweh, we know who that is. That's mm-hmm. Jesus of Nazareth. Oh, no, we so, can't have him. Yeah. Let's hide him. But some of these things in the Septuagint, uh, in, in the Proverbs, by the way, it's, it's just like, boy, that's, some of them are very close, just reworded somewhat. And maybe it's the translation from Hebrew into Greek and then into English that account for the changes as opposed to going straight from Hebrew to English. Could be. But others are like these. Like, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Verse 2, again, desire without knowledge is not good. Now, the alternate translation of the word that is a soul without knowledge, that word translated Hmm. desire in verse 2 in the ESV can alternately be a soul without knowledge is not good. The net Bible translators render it this way. It is dangerous to have zeal without knowledge. 
And the well, one who acts hastily makes poor choices. Yeah, I would say that is the 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 uh, part of the meaning, mm-hmm. a soul without knowledge. Um, it's not uncommon to refer to a person as a soul. Mm-hmm. How many souls died yeah. before that, you know, mm-hmm. sinking, that kind of thing. Verse three, when a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against Yahweh. Oh, boy, howdy, there's a sermon there. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lord, why did you ever lead me to this? What have I ever done? Well, let's see. Back here, you made this choice, and then you made this choice, and then you made this one, and they all led to here. Free will mm-hmm. is still in your hands. Septuagint is way different. Uh, Many attend to the faces of kings, but every evil person becomes a disgrace to a man. That's not even close. No, and I'm betting that the somehow in there is a literal translation of an idiom that we've long since lost. Mm-hmm. Verse 3, when a man's folly brings his way to ruin, his heart rages against Yahweh. Verse 4, wealth brings many new friends, but a poor man is deserted by his friend. (laughs) Singular. He's left alone, Mm -hmm. but if you're rich, hey, I won the lottery. Oh, we're we're like ninth cousins, Mm -hmm. twice removed. Uh, Could I get a loan? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. That was, uh, hmm. That was verse one in pro in, in, um, the Septuagint. Oh, really? Yeah. Wealth brings many new friends, but, uh, wealth adds many friends, but the poor one is abandoned even by the friend that he has. Verse one. Well, it's very similar to better as a poor person who walks in his integrity than one who is crooked in speech and his foot. It's the idea yeah. that you're better <clears throat> off to be poor and make the right choices than to be wealthy and not make the right, make yeah. the right choices. It's like. There were several verses inserted into Proverbs 19 in the Masoretic text. And now that I'm seeing this, um, yeah. They were verse, put into a salad four, spinner and then. Right. They, they, they made a Proverbs smoothie. Verse four of the, of the ESV is verse one in the Septuagint. Verse oh. five in the ESV is verse two in the Septuagint. There's your, your title, Proverbs smoothie. <laughs> so, yeah. So I'll just have to follow along several verses behind. Well. Good that luck. that explains why those first few verses were completely different in the Masoretic in, in the uh, Masoretic Well, text. did you not notice that the first couple of verses are omitted in the Septuagint? But they're they're numbered the same way. They they don't say, you know, verse 1 2 3 are omitted. It just here it's numbered 1 2 3 4, but they're actually 4 5 6 7. This in, in the lexicon, omi- this says omitted. Okay, in, in the then, in the Brenton, they didn't they didn't number it that way in the lexicon. Ah, so that therein lies the confusion. Well, there we are. Now we figured it that out. That explains it. Okay, S- verses omitted, in, but here the thing is not omitted in the Septuagint. They were added in the Masoretic text. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> yeah. So verse six, um, five, five again. A false witness will not go unpunished. Sorry, for the first time. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will not escape. <laughs> Maybe you should be reading from the Brenton. Well, I suppose. Many seek the favor of a generous man, alternately of a noble, mm-hmm. and everyone is a friend to a man who gives gifts. Mm-hmm. See, In now other these words, are very your similar. integrity can be purchased. Mm-hmm. All a, ma- a poor man's brothers hate him. And much more do his friends go far from him. He pursues them with words, but does not have them. That's verse 7? Yep. Um, Which would be the four, what, five, four, four? Four in the, in the Lexham Septuagint, or seven in the Brenton Septuagint. Anyone who hates a needy brother will also be far from affection. Good insight will approach those who know it, and a prudent man will find it. The um, one who does many evil things brings evil to its full, and the one who quarrels with words will not be saved. What number are you reading? That was the equivalent in the Septuagint. Number? Four, but it would be seven in the Here's Brenton. four in the Brenton. Wealth acquires many friends, but the poor is deserted even of the friend he has. Right. 
which is the equivalent of four in the ESV. Verse seven in the ESV is verse four in the Brent, the Lexham Septuagint. No, I, I know, I know, because it does. I don't have the omitted text. Oh, then I was supposed to read seven. Okay. Everyone who hates his poor brother shall also be far from friendship. Good understanding will draw. Yeah, that's what I was concerned about. And right. I thought, that's a whole lot longer than the one we've got. And then, never mind. <laughs> I'd forgotten your numbers were different. Yep. Shouldn't have asked you. So your verse, my verse seven. Is verse four. In okay. The, in the Lexham Septuagint. I would say follow along in the other one. Yeah. Keep the two tabs open so you can compare them. Right. It it's, avoids confusion. Verse 8. Whoever gets... Those of you keeping score at home, <laughs> we're on verse 8. Now reading, verse number 9, Manny eight. Mota. <laughs> whoever gets sense loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will discover good. A false witness will not go unpunished, and he who breathes out lies will perish. You know, that's something that we tend to forget. Liars go to hell. Mm -hmm. You may look at someone and think, boy, they're just practically a saint. They must be a believer. Hmm. Or, boy, he just, the way he acts, he must just be going to hell in a handbasket. One is covered by the blood of Christ. One is not. And they're not necessarily what you think. The Lord looks on the heart, and you can live what appears to be a perfect life, but if you are lying, mm-hmm. think of the rich man. I've, I've followed all the commandments. I've never broken anything from the time that I was born. Mm-hmm. Jesus says, well, go sell all your money. Go mm-hmm. sell, sell, sell everything you have. Yeah, and come follow me, because all of that doesn't really mean anything. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And he just went away really sad, because mm-hmm. <laughs> he didn't want to do that. Okay, so I've got this. I've got the Brenton Septuagint open now too. Now you're Brenton. Yeah, Brenton and Lexham. Brentonic. Mm-hmm. Uh, verse ten. It is not fitting for a fool to live in luxury, much less for a slave to rule over princes. Now this isn't saying that slaves shouldn't rule. It's just that in the ancient world, three thousand years ago, the idea of a slave ruling was just unthinkable. The point is that um, it is just as unthinkable or ridiculous to imagine a fool living in luxury because he would not use the wealth wisely. He would not. uh, As it would be for a slave to rule. So again, this is not demeaning those of the slave class. It's just in that world 3,000 years ago, the idea that a slave would ever rule over others was just Ludicrous. I'm now going to to say something political. Okay. There is a move afoot to take those who have do not have anything Mm -hmm. and give them everything, or to make sure everyone has the same. Yeah, equal outcomes. Equal outcomes, but we're all we are also seeing a flipping of the current social structure. In other words. Those on the bottom who are poor, I get it. They they deserve a chance. Well, let's make them. Let's put them at the top, mm-hmm. and they will get to rule over those who have ruled over them. First of all, that never happens. Mm-hmm. But second of all, when you take out one, when when you remove those at the bottom and make them rulers, then they say we'll rule equita- equitably. It'll be a brand new world. Oh, it'll be nirvana. It'll be uh, a, the most amazing society that has ever been imagined. Mm-hmm. And then they behave exactly like those that they kicked out. Yeah. That's the irony here. If uh, you have an oppressed class and an oppressor class, you make the oppressed the oppressors. Mm-hmm. It's like, uh, what, Animal Farm, Orwell? It flips over and over and over again mm-hmm. because yeah. mankind is sinful. That is the simple truth. We live in a world of sin. Um, It also reminds me, this verse also reminds me that once a year at Saturnalia, Mm -hmm. everything flipped. Right. And those who were the servants became the rulers just for one day. Yeah. And uh, I learned that that's a very, very old, old Mm -hmm. 
festival. It didn't begin with the Romans. It didn't begin with the Romans. The Greeks celebrated Cronia because Kronos was the equivalent of Saturn. But there were texts found within the last 50 years in Turkey, Hurrian religious texts, Ah. that show that the Hurrian version of Kronos slash Saturn named Kumarbi also, like like them, had been banished to the netherworld by his son, the storm god, would come back for a festival and was seated at the right hand of the storm god for this festival and that everything social norms were flipped on their heads. Mm -hmm. So that's a very ancient practice that goes back to the Hurrians of northern Mesopotamia who predate the Greeks and Romans by a couple thousand years. Really interesting because what it's what they're celebrating is a flipping of the the natural quote unquote the natural order so that those who are below go to the top Mm -hmm. as in Kumarbi Mm -hmm. comes up and takes over. Well, one day, Kronos is going to come up and mm-hmm. take over right. for five months. Angel of the bottomless pit, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Verse 12. A king's wrath is like the growling of a lion mm-hmm. or of glory Gilbert. <laughs> she gets a toy in her mouth. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She lets you know about it. <laughs> a king's wrath is like the growling of a lion, but his favor is like you on the grass Mm -hmm. and in this case remember that our king is christ do you want him growling like a lion Mm. or you know being like the dew on the grass Mm -hmm. a foolish son is ruined to his father and a wife's quarreling is a continual (laughs) dripping of rain Don't be a dripping of rain. Don't be a drip. A crushed spirit who can bear it. Mm, That is true. (laughs) Verse 14, house and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from Yahweh. Ah, that's a good one. Let's go back to uh, verse 12 again. Uh, Was it verse 13? Verse 13. Okay. Yeah, verse 13. Um, In the Septuagint, Brenton renders it, a foolish son is a disgrace to his father, vows paid out of the hire of a harlot are not pure. That's nothing like, yeah, I remember yeah. reading that this morning too. I'm glad yeah. you brought it up. Prayers that's from the pay of a prostitute. Not really yeah. the same. No, no. A wife's quarreling is a continual dripping of rain. Hmm. Not really the yeah, same. No, not at all. So ver- verse, uh, verse 14 again, house and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from Yahweh. Mm-hmm. Slothfulness casts into a deep sleep, and an idle person will suffer hunger. Huh. Well, the Septuagint's a little different. We're back to uh, effeminate persons mm, again. Yeah, I thought that came yeah. in again. Cowardice detains an effeminate person, and the soul of an idle person will go hungry. Cowardness detains? Cowardice detains an effeminate person, or in the Brenton, cowardice possesses the effeminate man. Well... If if you were terribly afraid mm-hmm. in what we would call cowardice, it would hold you back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the Greek word katake, meaning to hold, withhold, or hold fast. What's the second part of it? The second part, oh, uh, the, the, pretty much the same. And the soul of an idle, idle person will go hungry. Hmm. Interesting. Verse 16, whoever keeps the commandment keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. Whoever keeps the commandment keeps his life. He who despises his ways will die. Well, it does not, this is not to imply that the law is what we're to keep in order to find life. True, yeah. What does it say in the Brenton? Uh, pretty much the same thing. Um, he that keeps the commandment keeps his own soul, but he that despises his ways shall perish. Mm. Well, to me, the biggest commandment is love the Lord your God Mm -hmm. with all your heart, soul, and mind. And love your neighbor as you love yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Whoever is generous to the poor lends to Yahweh, Mm -hmm. and he will repay him for his deed. So even though the Lord says the poor you will have with you always, that's a result of human sin. Mm-hmm. Um, we can do our best to help those 
in need. We're not to use that as an excuse to not help those in need. Exactly. You're wearing a t-shirt right now from Bridges for Peace, and we'll talk more about that when we discuss our uh, next, our November mission to Israel. Um, but those people, they are, they are helping the poor and the needy. Mm-hmm. Um, verse 18. 18. Mm-hmm. Discipline your son, for there is hope. Do not set your heart on putting him to death. Subtuagent's slightly different. Chasten thy son, for so he shall be hopeful, and be not exalted in thy soul to haughtiness. Or in more modern English, discipline your son, for in this way he will be hopeful, and do not be raised to insolence in your soul. Be angry and sin not. And then there's a, uh, a commandment not to uh, not to chasten your children so that you oh gosh what is do, it do not frustrate your children this yeah. uh, Ephesians 5 yeah yeah yeah. Um, yeah discipline your son but do it as an act of love I mean the idea is uh, you, you've disobeyed me so I'm going to beat you to within an inch of your life right that's, that's going to do nothing right right the idea is the correction is to set them on the right path so that they will have hope for a good life. Yeah. But if you're just taking out your anger on the kid because he wasn't Mm -hmm. or she wasn't paying attention. um, Right. Yeah. That does nothing. That does nothing. In fact, it does less than nothing. It's worse. Verse 19, a man of great wrath will pay the penalty. For if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. (laughs) Don't bail someone out if they've done something against the law. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's best to face up to your crime. Let him spend that night in the, in the and jailhouse, learn a lesson. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Mm-hmm. I wonder, with all the kids he had, all the wives he had, hmm. I don't think that Solomon necessarily penned all of these. This is a collection of Probably words of not. wisdom. Yeah, but he had a social media director. Yeah, probably, Solomon, just like yeah. uh, Joe Biden. Right. <laughs> Bunny trail. This morning, Joe Biden's account, not the POTUS account, mm-hmm. his personal Joe Biden At account. Joe Biden, yeah. Yeah, he was talking about, yeah, I watched uh, Trump's uh, uh, interview last night. Or, no, watched Trump's speech. I assumed it's the, the RNC. RNC, yeah. Says, what was he even talking about? Mm-hmm. And then there's this long thread of, he said the following blah, 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 challenges to it. And first of all, Joe wouldn't have stayed awake long enough to watch that. He's he probably not. asleep. He's got COVID, if nothing else. Right. But the words weren't Joe Biden. They were not. Somebody pointed out, I think it was Matt Walsh, who's a commentator at uh, Daily Wire, said that it's clear that this is not Joe Biden. Otherwise, we're supposed to believe that the only time that Joe Biden is cogent and can string together two intelligible sentences is on his ex account. Yes, exactly. Because so, he certainly can't even, sp- he could oh, not yeah. have spoken the words. That, never, uh, and never. Not, and we don't mean this to, to make fun of the president because watching what he's going through hits close to home for many of us who've seen loved ones go through Cognitive decline in their later years. Yes. It is not fun to watch. No, so. but if the intern is going to speak for Joe, yeah, yeah, it does not say the president watched, you know, former President Trump's speech last night. Yeah, he, you know, was concerned about the following issues. Yeah, he, he could have said that. it that way. Yeah, he he could have he could have pointed out something that he took to establish some policy differences between. Mm-hmm. Yep. But instead, he said, what the H-E double hockey sticks is he talking about? Like, uh, okay. Well, no, he didn't say it. I, the, intern po- the intern writing for Joe. Writing the for Joe. intern right. should have le- uh, used third person. Should have used third person yeah. and should have been a little more specific instead of just saying, what the bleep is he talking about? Yeah, like, I know. Um, okay. Okay, all right. Yeah. Listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Many are the plans in the mind of a man. Mm-hmm. But it is the purpose of Yahweh that will stand. Yeah. Well, I have lots of ideas, but I'm not sure that this is what it's talking about. The uh, World Economic Forum has plans. Mm-hmm. 
the uh, <laughs> nations of the world have plans. They imagine a vain thing. Mm-hmm. But the purpose of Yahweh will stand. Right. Not their ideas, mm-hmm. not their plans, his plans. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. What is desired in a man is steadfast love. And a poor man is better than a liar. The Septuagint reads, better a righteous poor person than a rich liar. Yeah, I think that makes a little more sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The fear of Yahweh leads to life, and whoever has it rests satisfied. He will not be visited visited by harm. Hmm. Um, I just want to say this about that verse. It does not say, in my way of understanding it, that if you love the Lord with all your heart, soul, and mind, which is essentially fearing Him, understanding and respecting Him to the best of our abilities, it does lead to life because that leads to salvation. Mm -hmm. And when you have it, you rest satisfied. You rest in the Lord. Mm -hmm. He will not be visited by harm. The Lord does protect us, but it doesn't mean that we don't go through circumstances that are difficult. I'd like to know what the word harm there is mm-hmm. in the, the original. What does it say in the Septuagint? Septuagint reads this, the Brenton, uh, the fear of the Lord is life to a man, and he shall lodge without fear in places where knowledge is not seen. Now, the okay, Lexham says, Septuagint is a little different. The fearless will lodge in places where knowledge is not examined. I, th- I like the Brenton there better, actually. I like the New American Standard. It says... Uh, The fear of Yahweh leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. Mm -hmm. That makes more sense to me. I used to have an NASB. Mm -hmm. It's a good translation. Oh, I loved it. I I don't know if I still have it around here. I'll have to look. I may have given it away. When I was at college, I gave away several of my Bibles. That may have been one of them. Um, This this just indicates, by the way, the uh, challenges faced by translators trying to understand the nuances of both the Greek and the, the ancient Hebrew. Very true. Uh, the Net Bible renders it, Fearing Yahweh leads to life, and one who does so will live satisfied. He will not be afflicted by calamity. That is quite different from, well, I mean, yeah, this different, says, different English word choices. The, the sense is the same. Yeah, that's why I wanted to see what the, uh, let me go back again. Um. The, ah, Picard. Oh. Okay. Harm? Mm-hmm. Um, well, I've got Ra. Well, if you look at it, the phrase mm-hmm. is Bal Picard Ra. Oh, okay, okay. Picard was a, um, a demonic entity. Mm-hmm. Well, it's terror. Pakhed. It's it's a different word. It means to visit, inspect, look at, see, command, summon, appoint, muster, avenge, afflict, or hand over. I wonder if they're etymolo- etymologically linked, though, because the idea that the Pakhed is a terror by night, it visits mm-hmm. you when you're on your bed sometimes. Right, right. Vicki Joy Anderson, we uh, need you in here. Get it, get over here. <laughs> Can you hear? Uh, let's see. Verse, yes, verse 24 now. The sluggard buries his hands in the dish. Give me that stuff. I want all mm-hmm. of it. And will not even bring it back to his mouth. He's too lazy. He's too tired. Yeah. All right, I'm going to, I'm going to double dip here. I'm just going to put my chip in here two times. I'm sorry. Septuagint's a little different. He that unjustly hides his hands in his bosom will not even bring them up to his mouth. Napoleon? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> he always had that hand in yeah, his jacket. Yeah, the one who hides his hands in his lap wrongfully also will not never bring them to his mouth. Again, All right, prob- clearly an idiom that we an just idiom that we don't get. Yeah, don't get. Yeah. Verse twenty-five: Strike a scoffer, strike a scoffer, and the simple will learn prudence. Reprove a man of understanding, and he will gain knowledge Mm -hmm. he who does violence to his father and chases away his mother is a son who brings shame and reproach 
Hmm, where have we seen sons doing violence to their fathers? All throughout the Old Testament. All throughout history, yeah. Cease to hear instruction, my son, and you (laughs) will stray from the words of knowledge. Yeah, irony. I know. Yeah, David had to deal with this, and then Solomon, whose son had uh, rebels coming up against him. Yeah. Uh, 27 again, cease to hear instruction, my son, and you will stray from the words of knowledge. A worthless witness mocks at justice, and the mouth of the wicked devours iniquity. Devours iniquity. Um, Septuagint, the one who gives surety for a foolish child despises a duty, and the mouth of the ungodly will swallow up justice. Hmm. So? Don't Don't co-sign the loan for your foolish child. Don't bail them out. Yeah. Condemnation is ready for scoffers and beating for the backs of fools. Yes. So so corporal punishment was a thing. Yeah, as long as it was done for the right reason. Again, do it with an eye toward, because you love your child and want them to grow up, train them up in the way they should go. And don't beat them to death. Don't beat them to death. (laughs) Don't... Beat them be just because you're angry. No. You know, when I was, boy, this is bunny trail, but it's connected. When I was in the first and second grade, Mrs. Shelton had a dunce cap and a corner chair. And if you talked in class continuously, or if you, not, not if you answered a question wrong, mm-hmm. it was never for that. It was always for behavior in class. And we even had one Student, um, we were, this is when I was in the first and second grade. Mm-hmm. It was a very small school. She taught both grades in the same room. She would teach the first for a while, then go teach the second. We could listen to the second grade, and we got to learn second grade material, mm-hmm. those of us who wanted to. Um, but if you talked in class continually, if you disobeyed her after a warning, if I honestly don't re- ever remember having to do it, but there w- were a few students in our class in that room, first and second, who were somewhat disruptive. And they may have been brilliant kids because oftentimes that's the child that can't stop talking mm-hmm. because he or she is bored. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you're put on this cap and sit in the corner. We had corporal punishment. You could, but that isn't how she handled it. Mm-hmm. And yet in the eighth grade, you better believe, the Board of Education was hanging on the wall, <laughs> and Mr. Graham yeah. would get it down as required. He, I rarely saw, maybe, and there was another room where it was the seventh and eighth grade together. Mm-hmm. I think I saw it used once. Hmm. So it's amazing what just the idea of punishment can do yeah. seeing the dunce cap in the corner on the chair mm-hmm. seeing the board of education on the wall but that's premised on children having enough respect for authority that if the teacher says okay here's what you are going to do now that the child was oh okay i'm sorry well that is true in today's, today's child yeah, yeah teachers would, are are finding that uh, trying to enforce things in their own classroom is difficult because children will not listen, and or respect the uh, directives of the teacher. And may I say that I think that is where the path away from the Board of Education on the wall has led us. Uh, I agree. Uh, It is also, I think, a result of the the dissolution of the idea of the family unit. Mm -hmm. When you've got a family unit that has been split, when the majority of children being born are born into single-parent homes, Mm -hmm. I think that also results. It's it's a two-pronged thing. You cannot have a teacher enforcing discipline that should be enforced at home. That's true. The, That's very true. Because especially when you get into those latter years, you get some kids in junior high who are big enough to physically um, threaten teachers. And especially when you get in high school, yeah, teachers yeah. can take their lives in their hands by trying to enforce discipline. On the other hand, you should not have... Um, lessons being taught in school that are contrary to what's taught in the home. That is a fact. That is absolutely a fact. And this relates to, I think we mentioned this on this program before, that um, men's conference I attended years ago, men's weekend back in St. Louis, where a, a 
pastor said, uh, the reason the enemy spends so much time trying to break up the family is that the family is the smallest battle formation in the spiritual mm-hmm. war. And if you divide the family unit so that uh, you're no longer part of a, a military formation like a squad or a platoon in the army, you're there alone on the battlefield with no backup and you're just easy pickings for s- being drawn into self-destructive behavior. Yes, and I believe that that's one of the reasons we have the verse where two or more are gathered mm-hmm, together, mm-hmm. husband and wife. The tiniest battle formation is the hus- husband and wife. Mm-hmm. And then when there are children, you get three, four, whatever, three, two or more are gathered, there am I in the midst of them. Mm-hmm. Unless, of course, you kick the Lord out. Yeah. You don't want him. Mm-hmm. You want something else. You want special flags and things like that. We just <laughs> won't, won't say too much there. Yeah, yeah. But um, this leads into, and if we're done with the study, mm-hmm. this leads into our question. Yes, a question from Peggy that came in through our app. Thank you, Peggy. Um our app again at gilberthouse.org slash app. Uh, I have been asked, she writes, if you've been a bad example or influence on children, but later truly repent, would it still be better if you had a millstone around your neck and be thrown into the deep? You and I talked about this this morning and I said, no, I, I don't think so. Because when you are changed, when the Lord comes into your life, then you can start having a different um, teach different lessons in mm-hmm. your behavior. Mm-hmm. You can have a, a different sort of impact on your child. I agree. Um, I think there are those who are deliberately trying to lead children into self-destructive behaviors. Mm-hmm. Um, this has become a really <laughs> divisive political issue in, in the last few years. You know, children aren't old enough to vote, drink, fight, or drive, but they're old enough to determine, you know, make life, life changing, permanent life changing decisions. Or about. yeah, that three month old baby knows he would rather be a she. Yeah. The people who are doing that and who are unrepentant, I think that's the key thing, the, the idea of repentance. If you later truly repent and you can dealing with a parent and the influence he or she has on his or her children. That I think will remove the millstone from your neck as it were. There, there are many parents who who don't truly understand the nature of their responsibilities until they are older and their children may already be grown, Mm -hmm. but it's never too late to repent. I think the, uh, the thief on the cross is an example who, as he was dying, repented and Jesus said, truly, I say to you, you will be with me this day in paradise. So no, I I don't think it's ever too late to repent. I think the uh, parable that Jesus said, that that example that he gave was for those who are leading children astray Mm -hmm. and never repent. Those who think they are doing good when they are running counter and teaching counter to the word of God. Even more than that, there are those there are those who may think that they're doing, as you say, doing a good thing by helping a child find his or her true self. Mm-hmm. That that person is in the midst of delusion, strong delusion. Yep. But then there are other people who are simply evil. Yeah. Simply evil. And they they abuse children. And use children, Mm -hmm. sometimes, until that child is dead. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reason that Skywatch TV does what it does for Whispering Ponies Ranch, to finance the work there and Mm -hmm. with partner ministries, Royal Family Kids, and other. um, I I guess Royal Family Kids now is uh, rebranded. It's called For the Children. Mm Mm-hmm. I always wondered about that when we first got to know Wayne Tash back in, in the early days of Skywatch TV. The website for Royal Family Kids is rfk.org. And of course, yeah. everybody knows RFK, Robert F. Kennedy, or Robert F. Kennedy Jr. But that makes now. it easy to remember. It does make it easy to remember, but there's a lot of confusion, especially as Kennedy has become politically active, running yeah. for president now. So they've changed it now. It's for the children. But the camps are still called Royal Family Kids Camps. Mm-hmm. And there are other camps here in the Ozarks that... Uh, Whispering Ponies Ranch is partnered with. There's a documentary series coming out from Skywatch TV called Rescue Us. That'll be out this fall. And that really um, 
explains why the Horn family and those of us who partnered with the Horns in this mission feel compelled to do what we do. It is to save those children who are being led astray Mm -hmm. by those who just want to use children for their own purposes. And many of those who are abusing children were themselves abused. It Mm -hmm. is a, a cycle, an evil cycle that the enemy, the principalities and powers perpetuate to try to destroy generation after generation and draw them into drugs and pornography and prostitution and gangs and so on. So, um, yeah, those are the people who are looking at millstones around the necks. Well, that is true. But, By uh, the way, if you're going to go to go, to, go there for a conference in Brookville, Ohio, Joe is going to be speaking on that. Yeah, Joe Artis Horn will be talking about this. He's working on his presentation now. Um, exchanged a couple notes. He's been telling me how he's hoping he can get through the presentation because there will be a lot of powerful emotions. Joe and uh, Catherine have... How many children? Four or five? I forget. <laughs> it's uh, four. Yeah, three girls and, and little Tommy. Yep. So um, Joe is a very proud father, and he tries to, with all of the demands on his time, tries to carve out time to spend with each of his children and to train them up in the way they should go. So for a father, and, and I can speak to this as the father of a young woman, now, now approaching her mid thirties, mm-hmm. which means I'm really old. <laughs> but I cannot fathom the mindset of somebody who would abuse a child, whether his or her own or others. And yet, you see that in the news every single day. Mm-hmm. So, um, trying to break that cycle for children who are in the foster care system is why Whispering Ponies Ranch exists. It's why Skywatch TV exists. And Joe Horn will be talking about that at the Go Therefore conference this coming weekend in. Uh, Brookville, Ohio. There is a spirit of this age that it, it, it boggles the mind, and it is coming from the fallen realm's teachings mm-hmm. and the lie that our society will be better off if we let children lead the way. Let me mm-hmm. tell you a story that I a, a report a news article that I posted this morning to X about a two cousins who were sent to stay with grandma for the weekend. Hmm. And one was eight, a little girl, and the other one was 12. She'll soon be 13. And the older cousin got into an argument over a phone with the eight-year-old and when the eight-year-old was sleeping, went into the room, took a pillow, and smothered her. Oh, my goodness. The district attorney wants to charge the 12, almost 13-year-old as an adult. Mm-hmm. By that age, they should know the difference. They you should think know. So. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to kill my younger sibling over the phone. Yeah. I know. That's what I'm saying. There's a spirit about... Yeah. Um, the way that children are being encouraged to be selfless, Mm -hmm. sorry, selfish. Right. Because they see adults being selfish. Mm -hmm. They see politicians being selfish. Yeah. It is an accepted thing to make it all about yourself. It's all about me. It's it's being reinforced through entertainment. Mm -hmm. And there's an example and we're rabbit trailing now into a PID radio episode, but that's all right. Um, I, I've been watching reviews of the uh, the Disney Plus series, The Acolyte, which oh, is a yeah. Star Wars spinoff, which the, the eighth episode just released this past week. And so the final episode of the series of season one, it, it doesn't look like it's going to get a season two because the uh, viewership has dropped dramatically over the course of the series. It's just, th- there are logical inconsistencies within the storytelling that are bad. But more than that, the way Disney has taken Star Wars, which was, you know, going back, you know, 40 plus years to the original Star Wars, you saw heroism and Mm self-sacrifice and um, kind of those Tolkien-esque qualities that make for epic storytelling. Yeah, New Age doctrine, but... Good versus, yeah, New Age doctrine, but in, in in the good versus evil 
you've got some some really epic storytelling. You've got mm-hmm. heroic characters, some who, you know, like the Han Solo character starts out as sort of a rake and a rogue, but he mm-hmm. turns out to, you know, have a good heart and does right. the right thing. And there's redemption for, um, oh gosh, what's his <laughs> name in the... Anakin Skywalker. Darth, Darth Vader. Darth Vader, yeah, who was Anakin, yes, Skywalker. Anakin Skywalker. Right. Well, in the more recent episodes of the Star Wars series since Disney, D- Disney is essentially just IP mining, intellectual property mining mm. the Star Wars universe, and they are killing it in the process. They have subverted those tropes to where there is no good and evil. It's all shades of gray. Good is what you make of it. And in fact, in this series where you've got two characters, leading characters, twins, one good, one evil, okay? You get to the last episode, the good twin finds out that one of the Jedi characters uh, inadvertently caused the death of her mother. Spoilers. Yeah. I, yeah. I, who's going to watch it? Who's going to watch us. it? None, none of us. So anyway, she kills him. She force chokes him like Darth Vader did mm-hmm. years ago against a guy who dared yeah. challenge his authority. So this is the message that kids are receiving from a lot of pop culture today. Good is whatever's good to you. Yeah. There is no objective determination. And, and there's that, no objective truth. It's and no my objective truth. truth. Right. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Because is there indeed. is a capital T truth. Jesus who said, I am the way, the truth and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. Amen. And kids are being taught, no, 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 that, that's, that's old-fashioned. That's a, No, truth is whatever you make it, and what's good to you is what's good. That's, look, every man does what's right in his own eyes. Mm-hmm. That's exactly what we were told to expect in these last days, yeah. and that's exactly what we see. It, it's, but it leads to destruction. Mm-hmm. And that's what we've been reading in the Proverbs. The Proverbs is like the antidote to that message that's being put out there by Hollywood, that uh, there, oh, there is no, no. there is Proverbs no light and dark. There's all just a big shade of gray, and like, oh yeah, no, there so, there is objective truth, right? Anyway, that's one of the things that uh, we'll be discussing this coming weekend at the Go Therefore conference, um, Brookville, Ohio. That's outside Dayton. If you can get there for that conference, I mean, L. A. Marzuli, Carl Gallup's, Paul Begley, Dr. Sherry Tenpenny. Uh, and s- spiritual warfare, Dr. Greg Reed and mm-hmm. Tom Dunn, Vicki Joy Anderson will be there. We just oh, uh, confirmed that with her this uh, this week. Karen Wilkinson, who's another author published by yes. L.A. Marzulli. Yes. And uh, she's got a really, really interesting, uh, really powerful testimony as well. Yeah, I look forward to meeting her. So all of this uh, at the Go Therefore conference and the Harvest Revival Center is a wonderful facility for an event like this. If you cannot get there, streaming video is available, and you can find out more at gothereforeconference.com. Also, as promised earlier, um, we were going to tell you about our November trip to Israel. Um, it only It's going to be a small group. Mm-hmm. We're going to take about 10 people, so with us, maybe a dozen. Um, but a dozen people form a very tight-knit family. Yeah. We know that w- that happened this last spring. We know it'll happen this fall, so... If you want to experience Israel as you've never experienced it before, Mm -hmm. if you want to be an eyewitness on the ground to what's actually going on there, we were just asked yesterday, well, you know, is it dangerous in parts? No. Most of Israel is exactly like it's always been. Right. Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, you wouldn't know that anything was going on. Right. Now, there was a drone that struck part of Tel Aviv. Mm -hmm. Um, That is extremely rare, and the IDF saw that. So Mm -hmm. don't let that... Uh, be a problem. Don't let that deter you from being on the ground, being a witness, and going to these places and seeing for yourself why Israel had to go to war. Right. We deliberately went to the site of the Nova Music Festival in May. That's on the itinerary again. We also visited a couple of the villages that were attacked, well, a town, Sterot, which is Mm -hmm. about 35,000 people, but it's only half a mile from the Gaza border fence. Yeah. So... When they breached the fence, those guys on motorcycles and ATVs only had to cross half a mile to get into this town. Mm -hmm. And you'll see the site of the uh, police station where there was an armed standoff, a siege that took place that ended with the, uh, sadly, with the police officers inside the police station losing their lives. And then as a decision to uh, end the conflict, because the terrorists had barricaded themselves inside the police station, they brought in a tank and basically Mm -hmm. blew up the uh, police station. 
But we'll also go to Gush Etzion, which was the site of a key battle during the War for Independence in May of 1948. Take your box of tissues. Oh, that was powerful. And you see the parallels between the existential struggle Israel had in the 1930s and 40s leading up to the declaration on May 14th of mm-hmm. 1948. Yep, and Derek and I have done a lot um, of study on this. He's go- you're going to give a presentation on the lead up to that. And right. many of the historical events that people don't hear about. Right. It was far more than a letter written by the foreign well, secretary named Lord Balfour. Right. It, the Balfour Declaration is not responsible for we just watched a documentary it's a yesterday. A tiny sliver of it. It it is. There were so many conferences and negotiations mm-hmm. and a letters lot of stuff and going declarations on. that went back and, and forth. Derek will be there to answer your questions about any of that while we're right. there. In the places where they took place. Yes, yes. We'll go to the Temple Mount. We'll go to the Mount of Olives. Mm-hmm. We'll go to what we believe is the true crucifixion site. We'll go to what we believe is the true burial site. Yes, the historical locations where Christ left this earth and where he mm-hmm. returned. Um, so, and yeah, stay just about a block and a half from Netanyahu's. So yeah. if you want to go down and wave. Yeah, same hotel we were at back in May. That's That's been reserved yeah. for us again. And it, literally, it's a block and a half from the official residence of the prime minister. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I can walk down there and you know, wave. And it's also right across the street from Paris Square, which is this little square with a fountain in the middle. They just keep police barricades there because when protesters decide to protest something, that's where they do it. So we can you know listen to them bang yep. their drums and shout. But they very politely end around 9.30 at night so we can sleep. <laughs> now, anyway, all of that information is at gilberthouse.org slash travel, or you can get to it through our app. Go to the calendar section, go to upcoming events, and you'll find that this is uh, November 6th through 13th in, uh, in the Holy Land. There you go. Now, so. um, oh, speaking oh. of Vicki Joy Anderson, um, the Ignite Your Fire Conference coming to Idaho Falls in October. I know, October she's been 4th added. and 6th, yes. So Sharon, Vicki Joy Anderson, Tracy Tennant, Heidi Begley, and more. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find out more. This will be at uh, hearthewatchmen.com. Is, uh, Hear the Watchmen are putting this together. Jeannie Moore uh, organizing this. It's at the Hilton, the Hilton, what is it? Uh, Hilton Inn, Hilton Gardens. Hilton Gardens, I think. Um, well, he'll, he, no, no. Holiday Inn and Suites. Oh, I think. sorry. No, yeah. you're right. Yeah. We we just stayed at the Hilton Gardens. That's right. <laughs> we just in Oklahoma. We just City. got back from that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. You Don't can ask uh, Holiday Inn and Suites in Idaho Falls. They've got a shuttle from the airport, so if you fly in, you can just take the shuttle to the hotel. And uh, the day after the conference ends, we're all going to go to. You have to sign up extra for it, get an extra ticket. But we're going to go to Yosemite. Sorry, uh, um, Yosemite. Yeah. Yes, Yosemite. I was right. See Yosemite Sam. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Old Faithful and all that other stuff. Yeah, and don't pet the buffalo. Do not. Yes, Mike Kerr was very insistent on that point. Do not pet the bison. Um, Branson, the Branson Christmas Prophecy Conference, December 5th through 8th. This is being put on by Prophecy Watchers. Mm-hmm. And I've been added to the list of speakers. But uh, boy, Yay. oh boy, Gary Stearman, Mondo Gonzalez, Billy Crone, um, L.A. Marzuli, Bill Salas, uh, Olivier Melnick, uh, Don Patrick Perkins. Wood. Uh, Was Patrick, Wood Patrick yep, yep, Patrick Wood, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis, Doug Hershey, Terry James, mm-hmm. Josh Peck. Oh, so. I know. It's going to be an incredible gathering. So Branson is a beautiful place to be in December. If you bring your family, there are lots of places you can go, and, and you can come to the, 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 the presentations. But come a day early, a couple of days early, stay a couple of days later. You'll get to hang out in Branson. They've got beautiful Christmas shows. It, it, yes, they do. Yes, they do. So a, a great family weekend as well yeah. as uh, just some cutting edge prophetic presentations. So uh, anyway, all of that information at gilberthouse.org under upcoming events, also on our app under the calendar section. And uh, and don't forget, we will not be here next Sunday because Derek's going to be preaching at uh, Harvest Revival Center. Mm, yeah. In Brookville, Ohio. And uh, I'll be bringing my Kleenex for that because I tend to get kind of emotional, when I'm in front of, especially when I'm talking about um, what we saw in the spring yeah. in, in, uh, in Israel. Seriously. Yeah. Father, thank you for bringing us together over your word. Lord, we know there are many in this world who are hurting right now, many hearing our voices this week who are in need of prayer for family healing, for physical healing, for financial breakthroughs, Lord. None of us wants, is asking you, Father, for wealth. We're just, in this economy, the way things have been rigged, so many are struggling. 
But you know, Father, it has always been so, and this is why you told us while you were here, the poor we will always have with us. It's because there are always those who will exploit our fellow men. But you also tell us, Lord, that uh, a day is coming when you will bring justice back to this world, that all things will be made right. Father, we just ask as Jesus taught us to pray for this, for our daily bread. But also, Lord, help us to forgive those who have wronged us, to let go of that anger and that pain. Lord, we pray for your spiritual healing, your, your spirit to enter us, fill us, encourage us, guide us, and grant us wisdom and discernment that we would have the words to speak when the opportunities present to our friends and our family members about the hope we have in Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for granting us this time. We pray for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, tonight on A View from the Bunker, oh. it is uh, the Iron and Myth crew. Oh, yay. Yeah, well, missing man formation. Dr. Judd Burton had trouble connecting. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> but we talk about the Nephilim. I know. Finally? Episode 31 of the Iron and Myth series, we finally got around to the Nephilim. 13 backwards, eh? Yeah, yeah, it is. Hmm. So anyway, Brian Godawa, Dr. Uh, uh, Judd Burton will be back next month. Doug Van Dorn, that was what I was trying to say. So Doug and Brian tonight on uh, View from the Bunker. That'll be released at 7 p.m. Central Time, UTC minus 5. And until next time, I'm Derek Gilbert. I'm Sharon Gilbert, and for Grace and Glory, who are inside the house, we love you. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you for joining us. We post a new Bible study each Sunday morning. Subscribe to the podcast and explore the archives online at gilberthouse.org.